All right, guys, just wanted to do a little quick office setup here. Uh, I wanted to talk about one, what I carry to work every single day. It's my, my nerd EDC, shall I say. Um, I want to talk about what I carry in the bag, what I carry on me, um, just kind of go from there. So just do a quick little pocket dump. Um, usually got my car keys on me. I'm gonna have a box knife. So this is a Krembit. Usually keep this with me or some type of blade. Um, my EDC for my weapon is gonna be my Staccato P usually with a Surefire Light, Pulse on SCS, um, Custom Stipple Draw by RM Custom Works. This, this video is not gonna be about this gun, but let's go ahead and make this weapon safe. Kind of show you guys what you know we're working. This is usually my, my daily EDC and then I'll carry a, a small flashlight on myself. But let's put this stuff away here and let's bring out the actual bag of what we're gonna talk about here in the video. And that is my Vertex bag. So Vertex bag usually has everything that I need for uh, kind of my office stuff. So first pouch here, it's gonna have Apple Pencil for my iPad, just a bag for all my cables and my MacBook Pro. So this is actually what I, you know, come in the office with, connect to uh, my monitor here. So I just kind of set it on my little stand. And then I have my USB-C connection cable here, keyboard and mouse. That's usually my setup. Um, in my office, I have um, some speakers that I connect to wirelessly. Um, just my, my pride animal sexual flag that I like to stare at all day long. But going back to this bag, what makes this bag so special? Well, like I mentioned before, it carries all my peripherals for my computer, my pen, flashlight, keys, cables, you know, everything else that I need, but also has something special. So you guys saw my Staccato P that I usually carry, but let's say something were to really happen where I need just a little bit more firepower. Well, located here in the back of the bag, we have, you pull this out and get the bag out of the way. Let's make this weapon safe real quick. Perfect. We have a APC-9 SD Compact. This is an SBR, this is a two stamp gun. Um, so one stamp for the stock, one stamp for the integrally suppressed um, system here in the front. So it is paid for and registered with the ATF. Don't need any stupid comments saying, you know, oh, it's an illegal gun. No, it is registered with the ATF. So just to kind of go over what this gun kind of looks like, how I've modded it, um, and, and how it kind of works into my everyday carry. But uh, first things first, I usually carry a 20 round mag. Um, in the actual pack itself, you guys are gonna say in the comments, oh, 20 rounds isn't a lot. Well, in the front of the pack, it's got a quick release tab. Got two 30s, just clamped together with the standard B&T uh, clamp here. So another 60 rounds of ammunition on tap that's ready to go, should be plenty of firepower. But, Back to the gun. We kind of start here from the front of the gun. You have an integrally suppressed system. So this suppressor fits over the barrel. Barrel has ports on it um, that actually slow down any nine millimeter, meaning 115 grain, 124 grain, any subsonic ammo down to a subsonic speed, which is gonna reduce that sound signature drastically. You won't get that supersonic crack. Um, pretty much all you hear is the action on this weapon. So very, very quiet system, low recoil system. And it's all from the factory. So nothing nothing aftermarket there. It's built from uh, Swiss manufacturers. Anything Swiss is super nice, super polished. It just tends to work. Shout out to Omega. But I, I kind of have a, a fond things for anything Swiss just because of their precision and their, their manufacturing process. So coming down from the suppressor, we have an in a uh, M-Lock handguard here. It's oversized to accommodate the suppressor underneath. And then mounted directly to that M-Lock handguard, we have an A3 tactical grip. It's made out of aluminum, that's M-Lock mounted, and it's kind of the pineapple type um, grenade, I guess, style grip. Fits really nice in your hand. Gives you a very compact but sturdy grip. And you have the integrated finger stop here just because the barrel is so short on this firearm. You don't want to accidentally extend your fingers past the, uh, the suppressor here. Um, but very compact little grip system. The aluminum, the manufacturing process on this is very nice. It matches the gun, complements it very nicely. So I really like this choice. 
Going up on the M-Lock handguard, I have an air socket mount mounted with a mod light um, uh, flashlight. This model here, let me read off the actual flashlight, it is the PLHV2 head. So it's in their compact series, super, super bright light. The candela output on this light is incredible. Um, just here on the back, I didn't think I needed any kind of um, additional pressure plate switch on this light. So just reaching up with your thumb easily activates the light. So no need for a pressure plate switch, especially on a, a weapon system this, this short, it's easy to, to still grab the grip and then articulate the light function. If we move on from there, um, going back farther on this gun here, we have the jet funnel from B&T. So this is a factory piece. It's essentially just a magwell. Very, very nice part, factory part from BMT, made out of, uh, I believe it's some type of polymer, but it slides onto the, the factory lower here and then you have a retaining screw right here. Just all it does is essentially facilitate fast reloads. So if you're in the dark, if you can't see, if you can't you know, get to the, uh, the, the mag hole very easily, this just kind of helps. So just no matter which way you hit it, it's gonna guide that mag right in there. So super quick, quick reloads with that. Highly recommend that piece. Going back, I have an aftermarket Geisley trigger. So this is their single stage precision trigger, so SSP. And it is exactly that, a single stage trigger. So no take up. Essentially, the second you go off safe, you're at that wall, which I can demonstrate here. Let's go off safe. Just make sure the gun is completely unloaded again before we test fire here in my office. But let me get a cut of close up. So if you see, no take up. I'm giving a little bit of pressure here. No take up already at that wall. And then you have a clean three pound break. That's it. Trigger barely moves. And then if we do a reset, try to do this very slowly. That's it. So trigger moves millimeters and you have a very quick firing weapon without having to uh, you know, facilitate a lot of movement here. So going back on safe. Going back from the trigger, we have an aftermarket Magpul K2 grip, which I've also had stippled by Arm Custom Works. Amazing company out of Fort Worth. They pretty much take care of all my stipple jobs here. You can kind of see on the, on the video here, this one's done in his snake skin texture, which kind of matches a lot of my handguns. Very grippy texture, very aggressive texture. So if you have any kind of sweaty palms or just getting nervous while shooting, this is gonna really help you stay gripped on that weapon without slipping or, or, or getting any kind of um, just, you know, a bad grip while firing. This gun being so light recoiling though, you really shouldn't have that problem, but it just still kind of adds another aesthetic flair that, that Really helps out with that custom piece. <clears throat> Going back from there, this is also a factory piece from BNT. This is their factory stock in its latest rendition. Um, super compact and comes with a QD attachment point. As you can see, I'm located right now with my QD attachment point directly to this Parker Mountain Machine attachment point that swivels. So my sling easily mounts there. The reason I like that there is because when this stock is deployed, if you attach here, it tends to be a little too low. So I'll kind of demonstrate here. So quickly detach the point and let's attach it to the back of the stock. But you can see as when it's deployed, this is gonna sit way too far down in your body. So I tend to not use this actual attachment point, but it is there. So um, nice little feature there that they had, you know, included from BNT. It is ambidextrous, so you have it on both sides. My quick attachment point from Parker Mount Machine, I only ran it on this side because on this side I have backup irons, so it kind of would negate, you know, gets in the way. So let's talk about my backup irons. These are Magpul, Magpul sorry, Embus Pros. These are in their canted 45 degree offset. So easily able to just kind of cant over and um, acquire a sight picture there. I know it doesn't co-witness with your primary optic, but it's a little bit quicker than having to uh, worry about co-witnessing through an optic, especially if this goes down or if you have you know shattered glass, anything like that, this is just a quicker acquisition without having to worry about dealing with this. Speaking of my primary optic, I used to run Aimpoint and I have since switched to Holosun. I tend to like green reticles a lot better. And this optic has been severely traumatized, being dropped, being ran into car doors. Uh, it's been you know falling out of a four by four as we go hunting. Uh, it's it's withstood the test of time and has yet to cause any problems. So I can highly recommend uh, the Holosun. The exact model number off of this one, as you can see, is the 503 CU Elite. 
elite mini the green reticle also gives you a solar fail safe at the top of the reticle um, which will just continue to run even if the battery is um, depleted what it's being attached to the gun with is the scalar works mount these are for the aimpoint pro um, comp series footprints so you have basically the same footprint as you have for an aimpoint t2 or h1 or h2 i believe they still have the h2s uh, but definitely the t2 optics same footprint for the holosun i went with the standard coat witness sights i know we don't have coat witness as we talked about we have offset irons but standard coat witness height because i wanted it to fit in my bag with a loaded mag so i didn't want to go too high and then not be able to fit in the bag and of course still have the loaded mag ca capability to be in the bag ready to deploy so with that being said guys i really don't have anything else that i can really say about this weapon system other than the quality is top notch the recoil is non-existent the accuracy is amazing and the sound signature is pretty much what you hear of just pulling the trigger with no rounds going off it is that quiet i'll roll in some shooting footage here for you guys in a little bit but this is my my daily setup this is what i carry with my computer my tools um just in my my laptop bag and no one would ever know that you have this much firepower in kind of a very concealed uh daily carry bag so let me know what you guys think in the comments or if you wanted me to touch on something that i didn't touch on the video hit me up in the comments and i'll be sure to answer thanks guys right, guys apc9 sd compact again um i'm gonna do a couple shooting shots for you guys got a steel target about 40 yards down range um Gonna do a couple shots on steel and a couple shots off steel just so you guys can see what it sorry see here what it sounds like um you can also see how light recoiling this gun is um got an invert bandolier here loaded up with some mags so running 147 grain um subsonic rounds on this first one just so you guys can hear what it sounds like um this thing will slow down a regular 115 to me they sound exactly the same uh just because of that integrally suppressed system but Let's see how this thing sounds, guys. Do a couple off steel. That is super quiet. I mean, the, the sound of the bullet hitting the dirt is the loudest smack that you hear. I'm um, we'll gonna go back on steel for you guys. How's that sound from there? Pretty quiet, huh? Um, guys, this this system here, I don't know if you can tell from the video, but very light recoil impulse. You can shoot this thing all day. I'm not wearing ear protection, as you guys can see. Um, no flinch. Doesn't even really register that there's a gunshot. I mean, literally, you just hear the bolt kind of traveling through the system and then the round hitting, you know, downrange, which is pretty much the loudest sound that you hear. Um, guys, get you one of these. These things are amazing. Stay tuned.